Introduction to Integration. You will find this on page 311 in the Namibia AS level mathematics textbook Y equals MX plus C to success. Indefinite integrals. Integration as the reverse of differentiation. In chapter 6 you studied differentiation which is the first basic tool of calculus. In this chapter you will learn about integration which is the second basic tool of calculus. Integration is the reverse process of differentiation. This this the operation you can carry out to undo differentiation. Therefore, we call this reverse process anti-differentiation. Just as differentiation has a graphical aspect, a gradient to the curve, the gradient to a curve, integration has also a graphical aspect, the area under a curve. Integration has many uses. For example, planning spacecraft flights paths, deriving cost functions in economics, modeling real-world behavior for computer games, and even in design of soles of some shoes. In chapter 6, we learned that if you have this function and you differentiate it, you get 4x to the power of 3. What happens if we do the reverse? For example, if we give you the derivative function, how will we find y? The answer to this question above involves involves the reverse process of differentiation. So, I multiply by the index and then I subtract 1 from the index. Okay? So, what will be the reverse? Instead of subtract 1, I will add 1. Okay? So, I will go from this, I will add 1. Okay, and then divide by the new index. What will be the new index? It will be 4. So I divide by 4, so that cancel, and that's x to the power of 4. And that is the process of integration. So I first add 1, and then that result I divide by. But is y equals x to the power of 4 the only answer? Let us explore a few, a few options. Okay, so say for example I have this and I have to differentiate, the constant just becomes zero. If I have to differentiate, the constant just becomes zero. If I have to differentiate, the constant just becomes zero. So although this is different functions, the first term will be exactly the same, but I will not be able to see the constant if I look at this function. So this shows that there is an infinite number of functions Functions which, when differentiated, give the answer of 4x to the power of 3. Let's just move it out. They are all of the form y equals 4x to the power of 3 plus c, where c is some constant. The derivative of a constant is 0. Differentiation eliminates all constants. That's what it did there. Therefore, the constant c is required. If we do not know the original function, then we don't know what the constant should be. It could be any constant. Hence, we say c is an um, arbitrary constant. Given more information about the function, we might be able to determine the value of c. The special symbol, this is for integration, is used to denote integration and it's called an integral sign. Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, he was living in that, began to using this integration symbol. He based the symbol on the Latin word summa, which he wrote as the S he made like this, summa, which with an extended S. In this chapter, we will look at two types of integrals. The indefinite integrals and definite integrals. So, in indefinite, there will be nothing there on top and at the bottom. And at definite, they will stand something at the top and the bottom. The main difference between a definite integral and an indefinite integral is that an indefinite integral, like this one, um, 
gives us another function where a definite integral if they stand certain values on the top and the bottom it gives us a number in the next video we will start with the rules of integration